Hello everyone. In this lesson, we'll be discussing about good arguments. What is a good argument? An argument is a good argument if it gives good reasons to believe its conclusion. It is an attempt to persuade people. Let's look at the criteria for an argument to be a good argument. Criterion 1. A good argument must have true premises. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. All wealthy people are drug addicts. Jimmy is a wealthy person. Therefore, Jimmy is a drug addict. It is a valid argument because the logic condition is satisfied. The conclusion can be inferred from the given two premises. Hence, it is a valid argument. But the question is, is it a good argument? No, it is not a good argument, but it is a bad argument. Why it is a bad argument? When we look at the premise 1, all wealthy people are drug addicts, which is wrong. All wealthy people are not drug addicts. So this premise is false. And hence this premise led to the wrong conclusion that Jimmy is a drug addict just because he is a wealthy person. So, though this argument is a valid argument, it is not a good argument. Good arguments must have true premises. Let's look at criterion 2. A good argument must be either valid or strong argument. Let us try to understand this with the help of an example. All wealthy people are drug addicts. Nathan is a drug addict. Therefore, Nathan is a wealthy person. This argument is an invalid argument because the logic condition is not satisfied. The conclusion cannot be inferred from the given two premises. Premise 1 says, all wealthy people are drug addicts. So it cannot lead to the conclusion that Nathan is a wealthy person just because he is a drug addict. That is why this argument is an invalid argument. And invalid arguments cannot be good arguments. Let's look at one more example. No student ever got 100% marks in the course English. Tony is going to write English exam. Therefore, Tony will not get 100% marks in the course English. This argument is also not a valid argument because the logic condition is not satisfied. The conclusion cannot be inferred from the given two premises. Premise 1 says, no student ever got 100% marks in the course English. But from this premise, we cannot conclude that Tony will not get 100% marks in the course English. Maybe she can create a record. She might be the first one who is going to get 100% marks in the course English. That's why this argument is not a valid argument. But the thing is, this argument is a strong argument. Why it is a strong argument? Because there are good reasons to believe the conclusion. No student ever got 100% marks in the course English. So there is a very high probability that Tony is not going to get 100% marks in the course English. Hence it is a good argument because it is a strong argument. A good argument must be either a valid argument or a strong argument. Let's look at criterion 3. The premises of a good argument must not beg the question. Let's understand this with the help of an example. It is going to rain tomorrow. Therefore, it is going to rain tomorrow. It is called begging the question. The conclusion is nothing but repeating the premise. Hence, this is not a good argument. Good arguments should not beg the question. Now let's look at criterion 4. The premises of a good argument must be relevant to the conclusion. What is relevance in this context? 
A rational person can accept an argument only when the premises must have evidence that can convince the listener or the reader. It means avoid claims or theories which are true but do not have the evidence which can convince the listener or the reader. Let's look at an example. The earth revolves around the sun. Therefore, heliocentric theory is right. This argument is both a valid argument and a sound argument. But this argument will not make any sense to the people who lived in 15th century, who believed in geocentric theory. Hence, it is not a good argument because it cannot persuade the people who lived in 15th century. What evidence we can give to the people who lived in 15th century that heliocentric theory is right? So a good argument must always have the premises which are relevant to the conclusion, which can convince the audience. Now let's go through a summary on good arguments. A good argument must satisfy four criteria. Criterion 1. A good argument must have true premises. Criterion 2. A good argument must be either a valid argument or a strong argument. Criterion 3. The premises of a good argument must not beg the question. Criterion 4. The premises of a good argument must be relevant to the conclusion.